Gallup guy trying to move anyway. Begin it. Part is six. We got you. Nine o'clock and come up. Looks like it's going to be crowded. Yeah, you bet. Is this where Billy Brody is playing tonight? Sure is. Gallup guy trying to move anyway. All the work. All the folk. You got it. Two starts in that. Is Billy Brody here now? I don't know, and I ain't seen him come in yet. Oh. Yeah, look, if you ladies is fixing to see the show, you better have some ID and come back with your mamas. Yeah, some guys around the movie, right? Benitez, part of five. Yeah, that's right, and better be early. It's starting to come in. Hi there, fellas. How we doing on that reservation list? Hey, we're booked for this out. And I don't know where we're going for them all. Let me see. Spencer, let him in. Uh -huh. He's from the local TV. An Ingram party for, let them in. They're from the papers. And anybody that comes from the radio or the record industry, you let them in because I gotta get this boy back on the charts. Excuse me, do you know Billy Brody? Look, girls, we're busy. Now come back when you're 18. Girls and guys, run for a minute. Hang on, please. Uh, I'm Billy's manager. What can I do for you? Would you ask him to sign this? He is here, isn't he? Uh, he's just slipped in the back. All right, kids, now, you wait here, and I'll see what I can do for you. Uh -huh. Yeah! Well, which way do you want it? This way? Or this way? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Look at my face. It's all puffed up to one side. One of them teeth is half rotted back there. Shoot. I need a drink. Where's that sherry? Here. You're gonna need more than a drink when you get in front of that audience. Now hold still whilst I try to do something with your hair. What's left? But it hurts, Franny. Don't cry. You'll run your makeup. Look up. Now, whatever you do, don't cry. Are you through? Billy, we're only gonna give you four bars before you took my heart to nine instead of eight. What do you mean you're only gonna give me four bars? I need eight full measures to get across that dang full stage floor. It don't make no sense, Billy. The music just goes around and around. Well, I don't care if it goes in, out, sideways. I need eight measures, and that's that. And if you don't like it, you can discuss it with my manager. Hey, Billy, you're going to be sensational for us tonight. What a comeback. They're packing men like sardines. I never should have agreed to this. I don't care how much I need the money. I can't do it. I cannot do it. Don't cry. Don't cry. Oh, this blasted tooth. Oh, I need a drink, Lester. Yeah. Hey, oh, hey, what, what, wait a minute. Oh, no, no. Oh, no. You ain't no doctor now. You give me that drink. Billy, I can't tell you how proud we are to have you here in your first personal appearance since, since well, you know the accident. You've got a full house out there. Now I know you're going to be terrific. Knock him dead, killer. Knock him dead. Why did he have to bring that up? Why? Why? Do you see anything, Sherry? No, nothing. Me neither. So, how are we doing on those tickets? Well, it's sold out, Chief. Good. See if you get everyone inside. We're gonna start soon. I didn't get no telegram from my Muriel Louise. Don't she know that I'm performing tonight? Matthew, didn't you try to call the hotel and nothing? I ain't heard no word yet, Billy. No flowers, no phone call, no telegram. Now what's that supposed to mean? She don't love me no more? Uh, where's my bandana? Oh, mercy, this tooth's gonna be the death of me. Lester, pour me some more of that sherry. Here you go, Billy. Franny, did you find that bandana? I'm looking, Billy. Billy, are you all right? Do I look all right? Do I act all right, Matthew? Well, Billy, we got a lot riding on this engagement. You just got to be good tonight, boy. You just got to be good. Here, 
You got time to sign this? There's two little ladies waiting outside in front for it. Oh, that's my music. Oh, my Lord, I, I ain't ready yet, but I gotta go. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the guys and girls Rendezvous Battery. Tonight, we are proud to present, after the absence of nearly two years, their all-time number one country singing legend, Mr. Billy Brody. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to begin for you with one of my greatest hits. You took my heart, and you, uh, <coughs> excuse me a minute. The, I seem to have something stuck in my throat. I told you I needed eight bars to get out there. Thank you for messing me up. Now we're going to start again, ladies and gentlemen. You, 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 you took my heart. I am sorry, folks, but I can't go on. And just where do you think you're going? You got an audience out I there. I can't do it, Matthew. I'm finished. I'm washed up. I'm through. What happened? Stop packing the things for anybody getting out of here. What do you think you're doing? I'm taking myself right out of here. That's oh, what no, I'm you're doing. Not. Are you crazy? They got a full house out there. They've been waiting years just to see you. What's the matter with you? I have only lost every reason worth living for. That's all. All? And what am I supposed to do? Get the people back the money? I don't know. I don't know. I'm sick. I need a doctor. I don't know. I don't want it. I don't want nothing. I just want people to leave me alone. Matthew. Will you please, please drive me to a doctor? I gotta get this tooth yanked out of my head. And what about your audience? They're waiting for you. Ask them to come back tomorrow. You better be here, Billy, or you're through. Honey, please. That ain't Donnell. Mr. Brody, that's my record. Go, boys, go. Sherry. How did you get in here? Somebody pushed me. Well, darling, we are going to the hospital. I just wanted you to sign my record, that's all. You've got it in your hand. This here thing is yours? Well, this one's an oldie. My mama gave it to me. I'd be so proud if you might put your signature on it. Well, you can have it, honey, but I surely don't know what good it's going to do you. Now, who shall I make it out to? To Sherry. Sherry? Well, that's what I've been drinking all night. To Sherry, my greatest love and weakness, Billy Brody. That's sweet. Thank you. Oh, please, don't kiss that sad, Sherry. I got myself a mother abscess. We're getting near to the hospital, Billy boy. Just hold it up. See if you can find the emergency entrance, because I am dying back here. <laughs> we need to see a doctor. Oh, my friend here, he's got an abscess, too. You'll have to sign the register first and fill out these forms. Now, you just go ahead, Billy, and I'll fill out the forms. I need you to sign the register, sir. Aren't you Billy Brody? I used to be. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Brody. Go on in. I'll have the doctor take care of you right away. Mommy? We've got ourselves a genuine superstar coming through here tonight. Billy Brody. Have Dr. Wilson take good care of him, okay? It is too. Thanks, Bonnie. How we doing there? Fine. Now, is this okay? Yes, that's fine. Now, to whom shall I make out this bill? Now, you send it to Billy Brody and care of the guys and gals rendezvous beanery. You mean that place out there on Brooklyn Highway? That's it. All right. What are you going to do with them pliers? Just hold still. This won't hurt me. Don't come near me. Don't you come near me. No, Mr. Brody. I'm only trying to help. Over. Oh, how he defies me. Oh, no. I said well, no. Well, to him in there. I have just may Don't die. Don't young lady. Dr. Wilson's a very good doctor. He'll be all right. Yes. 
Let's go for coffee. So how do you feel? Like a fool. You'll be all right. You two must think I'm a terrible coward. Oh, no. Well, I am. I never used to be, but now that I'm a little older, it seems to me that I'm just as scared of everything. Oh, Gina, I ain't even introduced you to each other. Sherry, this here's my manager. Matthew Stevens. Matthew Stevens, this here is Sherry. And how are you? Sherry's Hi. mommy used to buy my records. Did she win? What I'd like to know is how come such a pretty little thing would want to come watch an old geezer like me make a fool out of himself? I like you. Oh, go on now, honey. Would you care for another soda? Maybe some more ice cream? No, thank you. I've got to get home pretty soon. Maybe I'd better call my mama. Well, oh, oh sure, now that, sure. Uh, Matthew, give the girl a dime. No, that's okay. I'll be right back. Isn't that the cutest thing? That little gal's been listening to my records. Billy, I don't know what your problem is, but the doctor who pulled your tooth must have knocked something loose in your head. Because you still ain't thinking right, boy. Do you have any idea how much money we've lost tonight? Do you know, when all this hog water gonna go hit those newspapers and hit the ground, do you think any of those people that you just appointed back there tonight are gonna come bobbing back to see you tomorrow? They'll be there. Yeah, but will you? You know, it wasn't easy exactly getting you booked into any club anywhere after being gone for so long. No, I know you don't need to hear it, boy, but you're gonna have to work harder than you ever worked in your life before if you expect to get back on those boards again. You know, we ain't playing those big halls no more, Billy. And those days are gone, boy. And if you and I are going to complete this road tour we got planned together, you better get it in your head that <laughs> you're going to have to perform. No toothaches, no crying spells, and no fooling around, Billy, because my reputation's on the line just as much as yours. How's your mom? She's fine. She just couldn't believe it when I told her I was out having coffee with you. She said to stay out just as long as I wanted. She invited you all to come out and have dessert over at our house, but I told her about your tooth and everything and that you'd probably be too tired. Oh, you're right, honey. I am. Please, let's scoop. Sherry, I want to thank you for coming with me to the hospital tonight and waiting so patiently for me to bring you home. Now, that was real nice of you. You don't have to thank me. Anybody would have done the same. I just hope you're going to be all right. You're my favorite singer. And besides, I think you're a nice guy. You mean that? I said it, didn't I? Well, here, honey, I want you to have this as a present for your mama. Sherry, if you'd like, I could stop on by for you tomorrow at 8 o'clock, and you could come see the show uh, as my guest. And why don't you bring along some of your girlfriends, uh, too? I mean, it looks like we're going to need an audience. Uh, I'll let Matthew be the chaperone. Would you like that? Sure. Well, good night. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> you must be plumb out of your mind, giving your rotten old tooth as a present to her mama. Well, heck. I've only got 31 left. You know, that might just be a collector's item one day. So, have you seen Billy yet? Not yet. It's 8.30. We're in the holiday. Ah, don't worry. He's probably just having a few last-minute jitters. That was as embarrassing for him last night as it was for you. Embarrassing? It was a disaster. Anybody else's business would have been ruined after what happened. I'd never let him play yet again if I didn't feel a little bit sorry for him on account of what happened to his kid and all that. Yeah. Well, if you expect to have a show here tonight, you better not mention anything about it. He still ain't over it yet, and he don't need reminding. Well, I hope somebody reminds him that he got performance to give you at 9 o'clock. The house is starting to fill up all over again. I've never seen anything like it. People must be out of their minds to see him. Well, Leroy, it takes all kinds to make it work. Here we are, babies. Where the hell you been, you leg? My fans expected of me. You'll be lucky if your fans don't shoot you unless 
to get your tailings. No, oh, now, now, don't be an old grouchy grump, Leroy. See if you can find some seats for my entourage. Now, Matthew's going to be their chaperone, except for this little, little, uh, Sherry. I want her here with me. Sit there, honey. Now, the rest of you can go follow the old bald man. Uh, he'll show you your seats. Bye-bye, kittens. See you after the show. Oh, I feel good tonight. Lester, have we got anything to drink? We got the sherry from last night. Yeah, that was fine for yesterday. But I got my own sweet sherry with me here tonight. A oh, Franny, Lester, I want you to meet Sherry. She practically <laughs> saved my life. Why, you're just a child. I'm 13. Yeah, you heard that. Now, she ain't a child. She's 13. Let's see what else we got. We got vodka on the rocks. That's what I like. Vodka on the rocks. I tell you, I think that I am going to be good tonight. I can feel it. Oh, Franny, you can do my hair just any which way you like. And you don't have to worry about me smearing my makeup, Lester, because I ain't going to cry no more. I'm all through grieving. Now, I just can't keep from laughing. Uh, that's all. I ain't gonna cry no more. Oh, honey, I'm so glad that you are here with me. So, how do you like my dressing room? It's tacky. Oh, they's all tacky, darling. So only the audience gets a nice place to sit down. Anyway, maybe you'd be more comfortable out in front. I mean, the show's gonna start pretty soon, so why don't you see if you can go find Matthew and have him set you down in a nice big chair, okay? Okay. And, uh, Precious, ain't you gonna wish me luck? Good luck, Billy. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to the Guys and Girls Rendezvous Binary. For those of you who were here last night, we are pleased to announce that Bill Brody has recovered following emergency surgery and will sing for you tonight. And now, without further ado, the sensational Mr. Billy Brody. That's my music. I'm on. You. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, well, now I'd like to do one of my greatest hits for you. <clears throat> You took my heart And you stomped that sucker flat Oh, what can I do about that? You took my ring And you gave that ring a fling Babe, you got me on a string Oh, honey, gee, come back to me I've been so lonely without you I can't go since you've been gone, I guess I always will be true. You never phone, you ain't been home. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. do Cause you took my heart and you stopped that sucker flat. You took my car and you drove that buggy far. Now I wonder where you are. You took my boat and you set that ship afloat. Dear, why are you so remote? My loving ma, come back to pa. I can't stand living by myself. I check the mail to no avail, and you done tip with half my wealth. Oh, oh, I saw they want no more of what they're seeing about you. Cause you took my heart, and you stomped that sucker flat. You took my horse and you left me no recourse but to sue you for divorce. You took my cash and you had yourself a bash. Sweet, how could you be so rash? Our credit's gone since you've been gone. The house is up for sale again. The kids are grown. They're on their own and they 
don't want no next of kin. You burned me bad and I've been had that. What hurts most of all is that when you took my heart and you stomped that sucker flag. <laughs> Looks like we're back in business. Billy, here's to a brilliant comeback. You were sensational. Thank you. Kid, you are terrific tonight. I never saw anything like it. You're a real showman. Mm. Now, thank you, Leroy. Did we make any money? You're still counting it, Billy. I have both given you a cut as soon as the tabs are all in. Go see how we're coming on there, Buzz. Yes, Buzz, go see how we're coming on there. Sure, Buzz. Again, boy, I just want to tell you what a great job you did at pulling this thing out of the fire. It ain't over yet, Billy, and I'm proud of what you did tonight. Thank you. Well, would anyone here like a drink? No, thanks, kid. I never touch the stuff. I'll see you later. Now, let me go check on that money. Now, don't you leave. No, I won't. Well, I'm not going to have to drink all by myself. Franny? No, thanks, Bill. Lester? All right. Good old Lester. Here, have some vodka. You know, I still ain't heard nothing from my Muriel Louise. Mr. Brody, would you autograph this napkin for me? Autograph your napkin? Shoot, I got pictures here someplace. Sure, darling. See if you can find my pictures in that shopping bag all yonder. Are these the ones? L let me see. Oh, yep, yeah, that's them. Oh, it's me. You like that? Oh, yeah. That's when I had all my teeth. See who that is, will you, Franny? Muriel Louise. What's this? A Girl Scout meeting? Excuse me, Lester. Would you take over for a few minutes? Hi, hon. How you been? All right. Baby, how come you didn't call me? You know how I love to hear the sound of your voice. I ain't had no money, Billy. Oh, that's all gonna change, Mary Louise. I'm going on the road, and I'm all through grieving, honey. Now we're gonna have lots and lots of money, because I am all cried out. Well, uh, uh, hi, Mary Louise. Uh, we sure have missed you. How you been? Just fine. Now, here's your share of the take, and how much did I give to Fran and Lester? A hundred dollars a piece for tonight, and another hundred for yesterday, too. Okay, now it's nice to see you again, Mary Louise. How much have you got there? 580. Let me have it. I want a divorce. A divorce? How can you say that? You know I never loved no other woman but you. Kiss off. My eye! My eye! I need you to hit a woman, you big creep. I hate you! You'll be hearing from my lawyer. My eye! My eye! My eye! Matthew! Would you see that the young ladies get home all right? Franny, you and Lester can go ahead and go. Billy, are you all right? Yeah, I just bumped into the door, that's all. Now see if you can find me some ice, okay? Come on, girls, now let's say goodnight. Night, <laughs> Not Mr. Brody. Good night, Mr. Brody. Thanks for letting us come, Billy. It was wonderful. Oh, you can stay if you like. Sherry, you coming? You go ahead, Millie. I'll be just a little while longer. Okay, Shirley. Good night. Here's some ice, Bella. First the tooth, now and now. Well, Franny, I guess like the good book says, I'd better take out some insurance. How about a drink, Billy? Well, we got the ice. We might as well have something to go along with it. <sighs> Thirteen years of marriage. Shot to heck. Billy, come on. You were great tonight, remember? Yeah. I'm great every night. That's how come I'm getting a divorce. I never should have bought that dang swimming pool for the backyard. Oh, listen, boys, maybe I'll have a sip of that stuff you were drinking, too. Sherry, I'd offer you some, but I don't think your mama would like it. It's okay, I've got soda. Ain't she sweet? You know, she reminds me so much of my little gal that I lost. Franny, did you ever meet my Debbie Jean? Well, of course I did. You had her in the dressing room many times. Oh, yeah, but that's when she was just a baby. I'm talking about when she was more grown up. I wish you could have seen what a beautiful thing she came to be. Now, I can't even stand to look at her picture no more. Did I ever tell you what happened that day? 
No, I read it all in the papers, though. We were working in Grand Ole Opry at the time. The papers. They lied. Made it look like criminal negligence. Why, well, it could have happened to anybody. Well, what really happened, Billy? Well, Mira Louise took off to get me some music because I needed some new material. Now, it was about two in the afternoon, and Debbie Jean, the little angel, now she was she was just practicing her dog paddle in the shower and the pool. Well, sure, I've been drinking, but that don't mean nothing. I mean, really. Look, Daddy, do you want to see me do a somersault? Oh, that's great, honey. Gee, you're getting good. Where'd Mommy go? Well, she just went to the store for a little bit, baby, Now she'll be right back. Look, Daddy, do you want to see me swim to that? Okay. Oh, that's real good, kitten. Oh, there's the phone. Well, now, Debbie Jean, I want you to stay right here in the shower until I get back. Now, you hear me? Yes, Daddy. <clears throat> Hello. Yes, it is. The what party? Oh, yes, I've heard of him. He is. Well, now, I normally don't do benefit shows. No, I don't. Heck, half the time I can't even get out there to vote. Not that I'm old enough to register. And what with my fans being there and all, well, now, listen. Do you think that we could talk about this another time? See, I got my little girl practicing in the swimming pool right now. Yeah, look. Why don't you talk to my manager, okay? He handles all the bookings. Listen, I'm busy and I really don't have time to talk to strangers on the phone. I'm sorry, Daddy, it took so long, Debbie Jean. It was just some... <coughs> Debbie Jean! Debbie Jean! It was too late. I mean, if only I'd been a minute sooner, I could have saved her. If only I'd had a phone in so long inside that pool. If only, if only. I mean, that's why now, when I look out into the audience and I see the faces of all them pretty little girls, I see Debbie Jean. I mean, you gotta help me, honey. I mean, I just want, I mean, I just want to give you something, but I, I don't know what. I mean, I don't mean no autographed pictures. I hate my face. I mean, I want to give you something special, but I, like I said, I just don't know what. Anyway. That's my story. What's yours? Oh, Lord, look at the time. Lester, Lester, you think you're sober enough to drive us home? Sure, boy. Well, then we better go. Well, good night, everybody. And thank you, Billy, for being so nice to my friends and me. Are you playing again tomorrow? No, Sherry, now this here is our last night. Well, where are you going? Now, we've been booked into a little club out in Amarillo. Oh, I see. Well, I don't know what to say. I'll miss you, Billy. You're the greatest. Good night. Franny, uh, would you write that little gal's address down for me? I want to send her something from the road. Sure, Bill. Amarillo, here I come. Oh, honey, G, come back to me. I've been so lonely without you. Cause you took my heart and you stomped that sucker fly. Here's your share of the take, Billy. $2,500. You were never better. Magnificent kid, you were just magnificent. Thank you. Here, Franny, 500 for you. Thanks, Billy. And uh, here's for you, Lester. Thank you, Billy. Yeah, well, and here, Matthew, now you give this 500 to my divorce lawyer. That leaves me a thousand dollars. Not bad for a night's work, I'd say. Billy, there's a whole crowd of reporters waiting out for you in the hallway. Oh, really? Yes, but before you go out there, I want to have a word with you about this record deal we've got going for us now. We need some new songs. Billy, I can't swing another album of yours, of your greatest hits anymore. Oh, yeah? Why not? Well, for one reason, there haven't been that many. Oh, yeah? And for, yeah, and for Why another not? reason, we're talking about songs that are 15 years old. No, there's a whole new generation out there. Billy, you gotta come up with something for the kids. They're the ones that are buying all the albums. Well, I'll, uh, well, I'll see if I can't 
bunk something out on the piano. Well, you're going to have to work fast. Well, really. now, where are we going to cut this thing anyway? Out in L.A. L.A.? Did you hear that, Franny? Oh, Lord, Lester. I'm going to L.A. Well, I got family out there. My brother Nelson lives in Pasadena. I am going to see Nelson and his young'uns after all these years. When do we leave? Day after tomorrow. Day after tomorrow? Well, I better start writing them songs. Have them bring a piano up to the hotel suite for me. Well, now I better get myself right out of here. Billy, there's some reporters out there. Well, I ain't afraid. Mr. Brody, may we have a statement of papers? I am deliriously happy to be playing Las Vegas at last. What are your plans for the future, Mr. Brody? I am making a record album in L.A. Is it true that your wife is divorcing you because you murdered your daughter in the swimming pool? I did not murder anybody. I did not murder anybody. I did not murder anybody. Hello. Oh, Matthew. How are you? Well, I'm okay. Oh, about an hour ago. Yes, I've seen it. Low, dirty, black lies. Low lies. Matthew, it ain't even worth yapping about. Now, I just want to finish the show and get out of this town. Now, I'm working on something now. Now, I haven't sat down at the piano yet, but I'm going over it in my head. Yeah, well, let me get off so that I can get at the piano and I'll, well, I'll see you at showtime. It don't do no good to feel so bad. It don't do no good to feel so sad. People are dying everywhere. Nobody even seems to care. It don't do no good. It don't do no good. It don't do no good to feel so bad. It don't do no good to feel so blue. It don't do no good to cry boo-hoo. Time only gets you in the end. You gotta be your own best friend. It don't do no good. It don't do no good. It don't do no good to feel so blue. It does do some good to scream and shout. It does do some good to let it out. Don't try to keep it all inside. Feeling should never be denied. It does do some good. It does do some good. It does do some good to scream and shout. Okay, Billy, that's a take. Let's wrap it up. Come on, Billy, let's go for some coffee. Now, wait a minute. Don't I even get a playback? I want to hear how that sounds. Oh, all right, I'll see if I can get it for you on the headphones. He wants to hear it on the headphones. How, how much time we got? You got plenty of time. Okay, then, see if you can play it back for him. Go ahead and put on the headphones, Billy. I'm going to switch you over. Look at him listening to that awful trash. Makes me wonder why I even bother trying to manage his washed up little career, this little nothing. I cut some awful crap in my time. This takes the cake. It'll never sail. Not in a million years. Well, at least we made it to Las Vegas. He'll never have that chance again. Not unless he remarries, and that ain't likely. I've never seen anybody so screwed up. And now he's hitting the sauce again, too. I don't know. I guess I'm going to have to bail out after this one hits the stands. I liked it. Thank you. I mean, that was great. Oh, all right, Billy. Do you want to go out now for some coffee? Coffee? Shoot, no. Uh, let's go for a drink. And remind me, I got to call my brother Nelson tonight. So, Matthew, wasn't it great? I mean, I'm so excited. I mean, it'll be, it'll be out just in time for the holidays. Oh, we'll be rich. Oh, so make mine a double. Hello, Nelson. Hi, kid. Well, it's Billy. Yeah, how are you? Well, now, how's Sal in the end? Uh-huh. Well, now, listen, I just finished cutting a record tonight. Yeah, first one in a lot of years. Oh, I'm celebrating. 
Listen, I'm staying here in Hollywood, and I, 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 I just don't know the area. See, now, I'm all turned around. Whereabouts are you? Well, now, would you like to come here? Well, I'm... Now, sir? Oh, yeah, well, I'm at the Wayfair Inn on Manhattan Place near 3rd. Now, maybe we'd go out for some coffee. Uh, oh, oh, no, 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 don't, 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 don't come up. J just wait in the lobby. Now, I'll be, d I'll be down. Uh, so, N Nelson, uh, tomorrow at 3? Billy, come on. Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. Now, I'll see you tomorrow then. Bye. Nelson! You didn't have to come up here. Now, I would have met you in the lobby. Well, we got here early. Well, now, come on, come, come on in. Come in. I brought the kids, Billy. This here is Ricky, and this here is Tina. A South couldn't make it. Oh, look at these kids. Well, they're practically all grown up. Oh, Nelson, it's, it's good to see you. Well, sit down. Sit down. Now, I'm sorry about the looks of this place. Now, I know it's a doubt, but I've been trying to save money any way I can. Now, I don't know if you heard about it, but my divorce is, is costing me a fortune. How can you stand to stay here? I could never live in a place where the walls ain't even straight. Now, you'd live any way you could. You need the money that bad, and you would like it, too. So, uh, Nelson, don't you go good and grand with me now, please. Um, uh, sorry, Nelson. Here we are, quarreling already. I don't know what come over me. Would you like a drink? Uh, no, thank you. Well, what am I thinking of? Now, we got to set a good example for here for the youngins. How about a, a cup of coffee? Yeah, OK. Sugar? No, just cream. Same old Nelson. Here you go. <clears throat> hey there, slugger. What grade are you in now? Six. Sixth grade. Oh, you're getting up there. And who's this little gal? Uh, honey, come over here. What a little beauty. Oh, she's gonna break a whole lot of hearts when she grows up one day. Daddy. Uh, we heard about your big triumph in Las Vegas, but I sure didn't expect you to turn up out here. Well, it's because of that record deal. See, now, I got an offer cut a new album here, and I came right out on the heels of the Las Vegas show. So, how do you like it out here in California? Well, I ain't seen nothing of it mm -hmm. yet, but dinettes and recording mm -hmm. studios, Listen, Billy, what are you going to be doing for Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving? Mercy, I haven't even thought about that. Well, well why don't you come on and have dinner with us in, in Pasadena? Well, I'm working till 5.30 that night, but come early and you can hang out with Sally and the kids. Well, that's real nice of you, Nelson. But uh, how will I get there? Well, you got a car, don't you? Uh-huh. Well, then I'll have Sally give you directions over the telephone. All right. Can I bring you anything? Uh, don't bother, kid. We got plenty. And you can finally see our house. Well, thank you, Nelson. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Well, we're going to have to go now, Billy. I have some shopping to do yet. So I'll, I'll see you next Thursday. Kids, come on, let's go. Bye-bye, babies. Thanks for coming. See you all on Turkey Day. Where about you two headed? Just down the road a piece, about a mile. Well, hop in, guys. It's cold outside. Thanks, Max. Thanks very much. Now, you're welcome. Now, my name is Billy, by the way. Pleased to meet you. I'm, I'm Weaver. This here is Zeke. Hi there. Glad to know you. Boy, I'm sure glad you came along. We've been walking since this morning, and my dog's hurt. Well, nobody stopped for us. Well, now, exactly where you boys been walking to? We're going to a little restaurant up off Flower Street. Every day they throw out a lot of leftovers at 4 o'clock. Yeah, some of them ain't even been touched, except by a few rats, maybe. Is that where you two fellas were headed? Gracious. Don't you two have any place else to go today? I mean, it is Thanksgiving, you know. I know, but we're just thankful it ain't raining out here. Yeah, could be worse, you know. Well, listen, boys. I can't see letting you go dig through no garbage bin on a day like this. You two'd better come have dinner with me. Oh no, that's okay, boss. We'll be all right. No, 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 no. no. You boys will be better off sitting down. Some nice fixings for a change. Besides, maybe you can help point out the way. 
Do you all know Pasadena? All right, sure, boss. Sure. Well, then you are going to have to come and have dinner with me, because... Well, I just don't want to hear another word about that. Well, all right, then. Hey, Mac, have you got an extra cigarette? Hey, Mom, what time is Dad coming home from work today? Not until 6, Ricky. He had to take over another man's shift this year. Well, what time is Uncle Billy coming here? He should be here any minute now. Mom. I told him 5.30. Mommy, is Uncle Billy really a famous hip shaker? Well, I wouldn't exactly call him a hip shaker. But he did set quite a few hearts on fire with his singing about 20 years ago. He made a lot of money at it, too. And how come he's so screwed up now? Kids, huh. let that be a lesson to you. Everyone pays a certain price for what they've got in life. Now, your uncle has had some pretty bad times lately. So just try and be nice to him. He used to be a really wonderful artist and a fairly decent person, too. He gave your papa and me the down payment on this house. Just remember that. There he is now. You kids, remember your manners. Hi, Billy. Sally. 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 My, how beautiful you're gonna be. I want you to meet two friends of mine. This is Zeke and Weaver. And I brought them along because I couldn't bear to see them alone today. I hope you don't mind. Oh, well, of course not, Billy. Children, come say hello to your Uncle Billy. Hi, Uncle Bill. Hi, Uncle Bill. Hello, Ricky. Hello, Tina. My, how big they become. It seems like only yesterday that they were a couple of peanuts. Lord have mercy. They grew up fast, Billy. Don't I know it. Why, my little Debbie Jean, she used to come right up to my shoulders, but then, well, she... Sally, do you have anything to drink? Well, certainly. Would you gentlemen care for a glass of wine? Spirits, why, thank you. It'll be just a minute. So, uh, Sally, what time does Nelson get home? Not till six, Billy. But I'm sure we can manage by ourselves for a little while. Did you have any trouble finding the place? Not at all, Sally. I mean, these two here are excellent guys. I see. Here you are. Thank you, madam. Here you go. Thank you. Uh, do you mind if I smoke? No, not at all. Have you got a cigarette? Well, sure. Thank you. Have you got a light? <laughs> Sally, honey, this place looks wonderful. It smells good, too. Thank you. Thank you. That reminds me, I'd better check on the bird. Well, it's almost done. Why don't we all sit at the table? Nelson should be arriving soon. Ricky, why don't you sit next to your uncle? Tina, come help me get a couple of plates for your uncle's guest. Mother, how can we have them here? They're bums. I know, dear. But it's Thanksgiving. Just be a good girl and put out some more plates. How are you fellas doing on that wine? Oh, I could stand a dash more. Well, don't just wait for me to ask you. Help yourself. Gee, thanks. Zeke, Zeke. <laughs> Maybe I'll join you fellas for a quick one before my husband gets home. Come on, Sally. Shall we make a toast? Show. Fine. To Billy and his renewed success. Here, here. Ain't this the life? A log in the fireplace, wine on the table, and a turkey in the oven. Reminds me of my boyhood back in Oklahoma. I remember on hot summer evenings, the smell of roast chicken used to come floating through the neighborhood like nature's sweetest perfume. We had a next door neighbor, Trudy Lutz, used to fry her pa's dinner on the stove every night at five o'clock. Trudy was a big, hefty gal, about 60. Anyways, one evening we smelled something of frying, and a frying tonight on 5.30, which was unusual for old Trudy. She most often had the food on the table by then. As I was saying, it was powerful hot outside. Well, pretty soon my mama decided to go say howdy-do to old Trudy and see about borrowing a cup of milk for the mashed potatoes. Ma went over to the Lutz's house. I remember so distinctly, and a few minutes later, she let a terrible scream like to scare the daylights out of me. Seems old Trudy had gone and 
had herself a heart attack over the stove that she was frying up the dinner. <laughs> Good evening, dear. What's going on here? Who are these guys? I brought them, Nelson. Uh, this here is Weaver, and that there is Zeke. You brought them? Get this bums out of here. Drinking my wine, sitting at my table. But Nelson, it's Thanksgiving. I don't give a good god darn what day it is. My brother knows that we got children here. And I don't need no seated characters coming in and out like it's the back door of some sleazy nightclub on one of his road tours. Now, are you gonna get these bums to leave or am I gonna have to throw you out with them? It's all right, Mac. We'll go, we'll go. Oh boy, we had a up in Pasadena too. My friends, my friends! Come back, he don't mean it. You miserable hypocrite. Now, I've been kind to the stray dogs off the street than you were to me and my friends. Yeah, well, if that's all you got for friends, then you better stick to the dog. All I wanted to do was show a little kindness. Well, then do it in your own house in your own time. Why don't you go back to college and take up the humanities? Well, why don't you go out and have somebody kick your damn head? Ooh, Daddy always did like you, Burr, and you've been wearing a chip on your shoulder ever since. Daddy despised us both the same, and you've been trying to prove something from day one. Well, well maybe I will. So go on ahead. All right. Happy Thanksgiving. Oh, Matthew. Matthew. Come on in. Come in. I've been trying to call you all morning. How come you don't answer the phone? I guess I didn't hear. So what's the matter with you? Have you been drinking again? Oh, Matthew, don't ask. I had an accident last night with the van. I smashed in the whole front end. Well, you got insurance. Who'd you run into this time? Well, it's not who, but what? I mean, I, I hit a telephone pole up there on Mule Holland Drive. I practically broke the full windshield with my head. Kind of wish to have. You idiot. I know. Oh. You want some? Put that away. I need it. Put it away. I need it. What's in those papers? Uh, these are your reviews. What? On the new album? That's right. You kid. I mean, you, you mean the reviews are out already? I mean, it seems like we just finished cutting the dang thing. Maybe if you'd bother to stay sober for more than 10 minutes for the last three weeks, you'd have realized how hard I've been working to get your albums back on those record stands. I know you work hard, Matthew. That's what I pay you for. So what'd they say now? Well, uh, tell me, what'd they say? Sit down, you look awful. I don't give two hoots how I look. Read me my reviews. I'll read you the kinder ones first. The real hatchet numbers you can see for yourself. Now here's the uh, monthly stereo review. There's a new album out by Billy Brody. Billy Brody, the star-crossed country western singer whose ongoing personal problems have kept him away from the limelight in recent years. Needless to say, Mr. Brody does not score a comeback in this package entitled Trail Songs. The sensuous wobble that once powered his hips appears to have become lodged in his throat. And one can almost hear the pop tops of the beer cans that open between the songs. And as for the music itself, Mr. Brody has apparently forgotten that there are more than three notes in a musical scale, and that even barmaids and truck drivers enjoy a good tune to sing along with. In the wake of what was touted as a shining resurrection in Las Vegas, this album comes as a bitter disappointment, if not a must for collectors of senseless trivia. Well, I hope they spelled my name right. Unfortunately, they did. Here's what Billboard had to say. He croaks like a gander whose neck has been wrung, but refuses to go the way of so many plucked carcasses before him. In a monotonous jingle called it don't do no good. His voice cracks 14 times while somehow never managing to rise above a low F. In short, Mr. Brody lays one. Matthew, 
I don't understand it. I mean, I put my heart and soul into them songs. You were there, Matthew. I mean, there were no pop tops of popping. I mean, everything I ever had in life has now been pilfered away from me. They want to spoil my only chance to break even, too. Well, I won't let them do it. I'll march right back to Las Vegas. Get over yourself, Billy. You're through. What do you mean I'm through? I mean, you missed every personal appearance I arranged for you to promote your lousy album. You missed every rehearsal before we went in to record this pitiful thing. And now you've gone and smashed up your own bandwagon, too. Forget it, man. Like, you know, you're through. Here's the rest of the reviews. Where do you think you're going? I've got an offer to do a disco album with Mrs. Miller, and I'm taking it. But Matthew, I'm behind on my rent. Now they're fixing to throw me out of here. Billy, some people got to hit the bottom before they can rise back up again. I'll get the bends if I go in the low with you. You never minded bending over to pick up your paycheck, you vampire! I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. And there ain't no God, Matthew Stevens. That was a powerful sermon that you could deliver today. Don't you agree, Brother James? Yes, indeed, Sister Robbins, especially when they came to the passage from Isaiah. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, or is he a dull that it cannot hear? But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face. Does that look like the form of a man to you, Sister? It surely does. Why, it is a man. And out in this freezing rain, too. Let us see if he's all right. You, you, sir, wake up. Why, look at him. He's all flushed with fever. Mm -hmm. Poor fella. Mm -hmm. What must have been for a doctor, sister? Oh, Debbie Jean. Debbie Jean. Who's Debbie Jean? I, I don't know. See if you can find a telephone. Call for a rescue. The hurry is burning up. Poor critter. Looks like it's up to the law now. Did he regain consciousness at all during the time you were standing over him? No, sir. Well, he's got a high fever and a bad case of pneumonia. You may have to open his windpipe and get some air down there. <clears throat> Nurse prepared his patient for oxygen and a possible tracheotomy. Yes, doctor. Now, gentlemen, if you come with me, I need someone to finish signing this man in. Are either of you related? Well, doctor... Oh, my God. Do you know who this is? It's Billy Brody. Oh, no. 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 Doctor. Doctor. Help. Help. Look, Daddy. Do you want to see me do a somersault? You're going to need more than a drink when you get in front of that audience. Don't cry. You'll run your makeup. I want a divorce, Billy. Daddy, the spies are the same, and you've been proving something from day one on. You're my favorite singer, Billy, and besides, I think you're a nice guy. Get over yourself, Billy, you're through. Don't leave me, Daddy. Come with me. I never loved you, Billy. I want a divorce. I love you, Daddy. I love you. You're my you favorite. I love you, Daddy. Get over yourself, Billy. Get over yourself, Billy. Pulse rate low, breath at irregular intervals. Looks like we're going to have to operate. Get some oxygen in here right away. This could be close. Nerves. Don't try to speak. You've been very ill. Two men discovered you unconscious in Persian Square Park. They saved your life by bringing you here. This is Los Angeles County Hospital. That's an oxygen line leading to your trachea. The doctors had to open you up and remove a large accumulation of mucus that was obstructing your windpipe. So you just lie there and conserve your strength. I'm afraid that word of your identity has reached the outside, however. There have been a number of reporters here already. They'll be happy to know that you're all right. 
The doctor has ordered no visitors, but I don't think he'll object to a couple of nice folks who said they wanted to meet you. They've been waiting all night. You can come in now, but only for a few moments. He's been very ill. I declare, Sister Roberts, our prayers for this man have been answered. The Lord has <coughs> passed a miracle. Amen. God, in his infinite mercy, has looked down upon and taken pity on this miserable creature. And the Lord hath granted his reprieve. Glory, glory, hallelujah. All right now, folks, you mustn't get him too excited. He's still very weak. One of the nurses told us, my good man, that you're a singer in the secular vein. We'd be deeply honored, uh, both Sister Robbins and I, if you'd join us in song of the Church of the Ascension Holy Gospel Hour. Once you're out of the hospital, that is. Uh, it's a weekly radio show, and Sister Robbins is the program director. Hey, no, 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 don't try to speak. Just, just think about it. We'd like to present you with this copy of the good book. It has brought inspiration to many. Perhaps it can be of some comfort to you now. The Lord works in mysterious ways, you know. Uh, and now we must go, my friend. Our mission here has been fulfilled. But please think about visiting us on the Holy Gospel Hour. We broadcast every Saturday evening from the Church of the Holy Ascension Rectory at 9 o'clock. May God bless you, brother, and keep you from harm. God bless you. There you see, and I bet you thought that no one even cared. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Church of the Holy Ascension Gospel Hour. I want to thank all of you for sending us your many cards and letters every week, particularly a little lady from East Los Angeles who sent me a note with a story so wonderful, so uplifting, that I wanted to take a few minutes to share it with all of you listening in tonight. First, let's pause for a few commercial words. Excuse me, Sister Robbins, may I have a word with you? Why, well, Mr. Brody, we're on the air. Uh, it'll only take a minute. There we go. Well, ma'am, I've been thinking about what you and, and Brother Seamus did for me and all, and what you said, and I have decided that, well, I'd like to join you on your show. Now, I've been reading that Bible you gave me. Well, just sit quietly here for now. Let me give you some music to look over. Do you sight read? Why, yes. And now, about that letter from the lady in East Los Angeles. It seems that this little lady had only one thing in life that really mattered to her. She'd lost her husband to another woman. She'd lost her job to the woes of the economy. She'd lost her big, beautiful house and her Cadillac car to the <coughs> bank that financed them. In short, she had lost everything in life she had ever wanted, except for one thing, ladies and gentlemen. There was only one thing in life that still mattered to her, and that was a beautiful, full-length, blue fox fur coat. And so, she would sit in her shabby little rented room in her blue fox coat, wondering just what she was gonna do. And then one day, there came a knock on the door, and it was her neighbor coming to ask her to prayer meeting on Sunday. Might he ask her for something she could donate to the church rummage sale, which benefits the poor? And she told that neighbor man to go away, because she herself was very poor. And so he blessed her and departed from her door. And so she sat down again in that rented room in her blue fox coat, which was her only comfort in the face of all that she had lost. And pretty soon there came another knock at her door, and it was her landlord saying her rent was way overdue and giving her 24 hours in which to pay up or get out. So she sat back down and she fussed and she fretted. And she fussed and she fretted all night saying, what am I gonna do? And on into the morning and the following afternoon and finally into the next night sitting in a present when suddenly there came a knock at the door. And she opened it to greet her landlord saying, I know, the rent is due and I can't pay it. And you're coming to evict me. I know, please, no rents. I'll go. But her landlord, he shook his head and said, no, I just came to tell you that you're safe, little lady. Your next door neighbor, he heard that you were going to be thrown out into the street 
and he reached into his pocket and he took out the rent money you owed and he paid it for you. Now that's him going down the stairs. And that little lady, she took off her fur coat and she ran down those stairs and she said to that neighbor man, here, take this fur coat. I thought it was all in life that mattered, but it don't mean a thing to me now. I heard what you did, and I just want to be able to fill up my heart again and give to other people the way you gave to me. Amen. So you see, ladies and gentlemen, it's possible to lose everything in life that really matters, but it's possible also to fill up your heart and begin again. Excuse me, Brother Seamus. Yes, Sister Robbins, but is it our broadcast? We have a special guest who wants to be on the show with us tonight. Yes, Sister Robbins. Who is it? Mr. Billy Brody. And he's going to sing a song for us that you and I rehearsed with the chorus earlier tonight called I want Jesus to walk with me. Oh, I do want that. And I thank you, Sister Robbins. Mr. Brody. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I want to dedicate this song to a little lady who I hope is listening in tonight. Sherry, this one's for you. I would like everybody to join in with me, please. <laughs> Yeah. 